Welcome to Film in 5D, the show that works with everything film and the 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammock. This week, we give you a look at post-production workflow with DSLR footage. Wait, uh, what happened to all the juicy Mark III info? Oh yeah, I was lying. I thought I said that last week. Oh, you know, who knows. It's, I mean, it's never gonna come out, dude. It's like, I, the Mark II selling so good still, like, it's, it's already, like, made. Like, it's probably not even gonna be that good. But when it does come out, we will have an episode on it, so check it out who knows maybe we'll go to it if if it has you know, 60p 1080p slow motion if it doesn't then I don't think anybody should buy it Before we begin with this week's topic, I want to give a shout out to everyone who attempted our 5D vs 4S footage challenge. The purpose of the challenge for me was to illustrate the similarities in picture quality between the world's best video DSLR and camera phone. And the winner of the challenge was Exit Only LA and JRJY3. Great job guys, both of you were the only ones to get 6 out of 7 correct. I'll be posting the video on Thursday with all the correct answers, so check it out then. We'll be having more challenges like this and some more interactive contests in the future, which will hopefully have some fun prizes, so stay tuned. So this week we'll be talking about post-production workflow, and more specifically the workflow that I personally use. Though I'll be mentioning a few other popular methods, I've tried them all and feel that my favorite will get you the best results. As many of you know, Candy and Solar shoot with the H.264 codec, which is a rather robust codec with very large file sizes. In fact, if you don't have a very fast computer, it can be next to impossible to work with this footage natively. And another problem with this codec is that most editing programs will require that you render your footage before anything else. This is one of the many reasons I prefer Premiere, because since CS5 came out, it allows you to easily edit H.264 codec in real time. And as you can see, there's a yellow line above this footage instead of a red line, which basically means you can scrub your timeline without rendering. So my workflow basically consists of dragging my clips straight onto the timeline. However, if I'm working on a larger project, something over 10 minutes, I'll render all my clips before I begin with the editing. This prevents the RAM on my computer from filling up too fast, which happens often despite the fact that I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. In fact, I always recommend that everyone render their projects every hour or so, so that you're not stuck with a 6 hour render time at the very end. And doing this can also prevent the H.264 codec from falling apart, which tends to happen when you're adding several color corrections to one clip. But if you think that your computer may not be fast enough to handle the H.264 codec, you can always offline your footage and replace it with the same clips at smaller codec sizes. And then once you're done with your edit, you can go back and offline all of your clips again and replace them with the H.264 clips. And to be honest, I'd recommend either of these methods because they're the only ones without quality loss. Next, I'll show you other workflow methods after a message from our newest sponsor. Valentine's Day is coming up and you still haven't gotten your sweetie pie anything. And as you may have heard, heart-shaped boxes of chocolates are old news. And you bet they are. But don't be sad, because we got just the thing for you! From those guys who bring you Film in 5D each and every week comes a seasonal treat for that special someone. Chocolate covered strawberries! But these aren't just any strawberries, these babies are extra large and extra delicious. But don't take it from me, hear what our non-paid customers have to say about these treats. Oh wow, I just love these strawberries. I mean, they're so juicy and big. I'll tell you what, I've been a member since 2007 and I'm completely satisfied. I mean, these babies are huge and my wife, she just loves it. And best of all, they're reasonably priced. Thanks, Larry. And you're right. For just one payment in 1995, text. that's just one payment in 1995, we'll send you one extra large strawberry today. And trust me, this thing will be more than enough for your lady this Valentine's Day. But that's not all. We're within the next 30 seconds and we'll send a shipment with a specially designed packaging. Call 1-866-123-4567. That's 1-866-123-4567. Don't wait. Order today. Other fees may be added to your order without notice. Product has been linked with the cause of cancer in some cases. We're not responsible for any choking or strawberry related injuries. If you think the special packaging is just a zip bag, you're mistaken. Hey, Columbus Starbucks chosen at random for three new types. And we're back. So the other two methods I'd recommend for those of you who are either one, using a program that does not work well with a native H.264 codec like Final Cut 7, or two, your computer is just not fast enough and you're looking to avoid extreme render times. Both of these methods involve converting your files into a more workable codec, but one is for Mac and one is for PC. So if you're on a Mac, you have it rather easy being that there's a free program that will convert your clips with minimal quality loss. It's called MPEG Stream Clip, which you can find at the link below. Now when you're using this program, you're going to want to look for the Apple ProRes 422 codec. It is one of the best codecs to convert to with minimal quality loss, and holds up better when color correcting. If you're working on a PC, you basically do the same thing, except you'll be using a program called Cineform to convert your files, which much like the ProRes 422 codec, is much easier to work with than the native H.264 codec. 
Once you've converted your files, edit as per usual, and when you're done, render the final version back to H.264. Now I gave my own uploading settings for YouTube and Vimeo in a previous episode, which you can refer to here. But that's it for this week. Remember that any of these methods will give you a great looking product, I just always prefer to edit natively whenever I can to avoid quality loss. If you have any questions, feel free to send them to me via at mentions on twitter.com forward slash Aaron Hammock. Follow us on Twitter at Film and 5D so you can stay up to date with everything we're doing. Or if you're on Facebook, you can like our page at facebook.com forward slash Film and 5D. And we'll be back next week like an empty heart shaped box of chocolates. Nice one. You like that one? Yeah. Since, since it was, it's Valentine's Day tomorrow, and yeah. Uh-huh. It was clever. That one took me a while. I can tell, dude. I can tell. No way about that funny. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. See you next week. I mean, they're so juicy and big. Was that a good one?